Hey everyone. Uh, in this episode, uh, let's talk about the concept of torque. Torque is one of the most important concepts in golf swing, so uh, <clears throat> it is worth um, paying attention to. So in golf swing, uh, we have to deal with uh, several uh, torques. Um, in order to generate the faster rotational motion, then you have to generate a large torque by using the ground. So let's first um, uh, define what torque is, and then uh, we'll uh, highlight the concept of torque uh, in the context of uh, golf swing. So let's uh, imagine a wrench here. And basically, uh, we are using this wrench to uh, rotate this nut. And then your force is applying here, uh, uh, applied here. Then first uh, we can find the center of rotation, uh, COR, which is the center of uh, the nut. And then uh, this line here is basically line of action of your force. So your force is acting along this line. Then we'll be able to find uh, the perpendicular distance from the center of rotation to a line of action. Which is the moment arm here. So the definition of moment arm is uh, the perpendicular distance with the shortest distance from the axis rotation to a line of action of the force. And then, so as a result, it, uh, when you apply this force, then the wrench system will rotate in this direction. So basically uh, this screen will be the plane of rotation. Then the torque is a rotary force that causes uh, angular or rotation motion. So uh, by applying uh, a force here, you are basically uh, turning uh, the, uh, the nut. So uh, there will be a rotation. And then, so in this case, the torque generated is equal to uh, the moment arm times the force magnitude. So length of the moment arm times the force magnitude. So in order to increase the torque, then either you increase your effort uh, in other words, the force, or you can elongate the moment arm. But generally, it will be easier to uh, elongate the moment arm than uh, increasing the force, because increasing the force means that you have to put more effort. So without putting more effort, by simply elongating uh, the moment arm, you will be able to generate uh, more torque. So uh, in this case, if you move this force away from the center of rotation, so if the force acts here, then you will have a longer moment arm. As a result, the torque generated will be a, a greater. So uh, uh, the length of moment arm plays uh, an important role. Uh, this force is uh, a, 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 uh, an eccentric force because uh, it is not passing through the center of rotation. So any force that does not pass through the center of rotation is called eccentric or off-center force. And then an eccentric force will provide uh, the, the moment arm. As a result, a torque will be generated. And then uh, this torque is the cause of uh, angular motion. Uh, to be exact, it will be angular acceleration. But um, so in order to uh, uh, accelerate uh, the rotational motion, then uh, you have to have a, a torque acting on the system. Then how uh, can we uh, um, apply this concept uh, in uh, golf swing? Uh, before that, um, so uh, this is the plane of rotation and the axis rotation is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. So when uh, rotation occurs uh, on this plane, that means uh, the object is rotating about the axis rotation. And then, so uh, let's take a look at the, how the concept of torque is applied in the uh, in, in golf swing. So here's a golfer uh, in the middle of uh, the downswing. And then the force shown here is the so-called ground reaction force. So actually, uh, there are two ground reaction forces acting on the feet, and that this is the combined force. So instead of considering these two uh, uh, forces individually, I just uh, combine these two forces into one, and then we'll simply use the combined ground reaction force. The ground reaction force is the force acting uh, on your body uh, from the ground. It's because you are pushing the ground, so the ground at the same time uh, pushes your foot uh, as a reaction force. 
and uh, later I'll, I'll probably have uh, an episode about ground reaction force. So I'll deal with the uh, uh, ground reaction force more in depth. But for the moment, let's just say the ground reaction force is the force coming from the ground and acting on the body. And then here's the center, center of mass of the whole body and the whole system, including the club. Okay. When uh, an object is uh, moving freely, then the center of mass uh, generally serves as the center of rotation. So this is a, a more or less a Newtonian uh, uh, perspective, but um, so we'll be able to see um, you know, how the center of mass moves and then how the body rotates about the center of mass. So uh, the center of mass in this case uh, serves as the uh, center of rotation. But in this case, the center of mass is not fixed. So it is called the moving uh, center of rotation. So we have the center of rotation here and then an eccentric force acting here because it's not passing through the center of rotation. And then this is the line of action of the ground reaction force. And then this plane, this screen, or this frontal plane is a plane of rotation. So currently uh, we're only interested in uh, rotation of the body on this plane. Okay? Then we'll be able to find the moment arm, uh, which is the perpendicular distance from the axis rotation to the uh, line of action here. So we have uh, this long uh, moment arm. Then the torque generated by uh, this ground reaction force about the center of mass is equal to this moment arm times uh, this force magnitude. So again, in order to generate larger torque, then either you increase the effort or elongate the length of the, uh, elongate the moment arm. But it's generally easier to elongate the moment arm uh, than uh, increasing the effort. So if you look at the uh, you know, coffers, the, the force, although uh, it shows some uh, differences, but uh, generally uh, from coffer to coffer, you know, the force magnitude does not change much. But uh, you will see uh, very different uh, you know, uh, moment arm conditions. So some coffers uh, will be able to generate the long moment arms but the same buffers uh, generate really short moment times. So this, the, the efficiency of the swing has a lot to do with the, the length of the moment time uh, generated here. And then if we consider this uh, as uh, the body of the wrench, and then you push uh, this end up, then it will generate the counterclockwise torque. So in this case, this eccentric force generates a counterclockwise torque about the center of mass. And the magnitude is at the moment arm times the force magnitude. So again, back to uh, this diagram here. Uh, during the golf swing, we need the large torque about the swing axis. So this is uh, pretty much uh, perpendicular to the swing plane. Uh, we need a large torque. Then in order to have large torque about the swing axis, then we should have large torque about uh, the forward backward axis and then also with the vertical axis. And uh, the torque, um, you know, that uh, that is uh, along this uh, forward backward axis is actually coming from this mechanism here. So the frontal plane is the plane of rotation, and that this is the axis rotation. And then in this case, the plane of rotation is the horizontal plane, and then the vertical axis is the axis rotation. But uh, this torque about uh, this axis, or the, you know, that's uh, causing the rotation in the frontal plane that is 100% explained by uh, this mechanism here. And then uh, also this frontal plane uh, uh, torque is important because uh, you will see very different uh, uh, conditions from one golfer to another. So golfers uh, can be uh, characterized by how they use the ground and then generate the torque. Okay, so here um, I have two golfers with a very similar uh, background. Uh, you know, previously played uh, on the PJ Tour and then now on the Champions Tour. And then at the top of action, these two golfers show very different uh, postures. So this is player A, and then here's a player B. And player A uh, generally maintains the upright uh, spine axis here, but in this case, the spine is inclined away from the target quite a bit. And then, so you see big difference in the body posture at the top of action. And also this golfer has a tendency of over uh, rotation of the club. But what's uh, really uh, um, um, important here is uh, 
the torque these two couples generate. So in this one, the combined ground reaction force is acting this way. So this is the line of action. And here is the center of mass. And uh, this is the momentum. The disc offer generates a long momentum. However, uh, player B, the force arrow is passing near the center of mass. So this perpendicular distance or the momentum is really short. So as a result, at the top of back string, this golfer generates a lot larger torque than this golfer. But here, the, this uh, graph shows uh, the torques generated by these two golfers. Um, here's the impact. And then these blue arrows show where the top of action is. The uh, player A, this is uh, the red line here, and he's generating this much torque at the beginning of the downstream. So at the beginning of the downstream, he already starts the downstream with a large torque generated or large torque acting on the body. So with that, he would be able to accelerate the body angularly, rotationally, right away. And then, uh, but player B, this is at the top of backswing, and then he's only generating this much torque because of uh, this here. So both are at the beginning of the downstream. But the player A starts the downstream with a lot larger torque uh, act already acting on the body. But in this golfer, not much torque. So uh, and then later he tries to increase the torque, but still the maximum is uh, way below uh, uh, this level here. So it's because it's because the moment the arm uh, this golfer generates is generally very short. Okay, so that's why we have big difference at the uh, beginning of the downstream. And also here, uh, if you look at the uh, player A, the main reason uh, for this long moment time is uh, this force arrow is inclined quite a bit here toward the target. So this is the horizontal component of the ground reaction force. This is the vertical component. So in order to increase the inclination and then uh, maintain this long moment arm, uh, you can increase the horizontal force or you can reduce the vertical force. In other words, the smaller the vertical force at this point, the better, or the larger the horizontal force is, the better. So by uh, you know, decreasing the vertical force and increasing the horizontal force, this golfer could generate this long moment uh, because of this inclination. So uh, reducing the vertical force uh, is called the unweighting. So he's using the unweighting quite well here. And also he has good interaction with the ground in the horizontal direction. So he has this large ground reaction force acting in the horizontal direction. But this golfer, generally this, this arrow is uh, more upright than uh, this one. And also, if you look at his posture, uh, his spine is leaning away from the target, but his butt is uh, sticking out toward the target. So uh, cent the center of mass position is determined by the mass distribution in the body because the pelvis is more located this way. So the center of mass uh, is not, is uh, uh, staying close to uh, the force arrow. That's why he has a really short moment arm. And then the, the torque generated by the ground reaction force about the center of mass can be very different across uh, golfers. So uh, this particular information can be used in characterizing uh, the golfer's uh, swing. And then uh, this one is near the top of that swing, okay, so where we see a lot of inclination of the force arrow. And then let's say we have uh, three uh, uh, situations uh, with three different uh, ground reaction forces acting, and that they are all acting at the same center of pressure. Center of pressure means uh, uh, the point where the uh, ground reaction force is acting on the ground. Okay? So the same center of pressure, uh, but the three different uh, arrows, three different uh, force arrows showing different uh, le levels of uh, inclination. So then let's say this is A, A, B, and C. Then C gives you the longest momentum. The vertical uh, force is similar uh, you know, among these three. The only difference is uh, the horizontal component. And the uh, case C gives you the largest torque here. So simply because the, the degree of inclination 
uh, this force arrow C gives you the lives to torque. So it is a, a, a beneficial to uh, keep the force more inclined toward the target at this stage. So the inclination of the force arrow matters. And then the second one here, uh, this is uh, when the lead arm uh, is parallel to the ground uh, on the way down. And here, generally, the center of pressure stays close to the lead foot, and that the force is also almost the vertical. And then the magnitude is a lot greater than uh, the force at the top of X. And in this case, in this case, let's again uh, come up with the three uh, fictitious uh, forces here, T, E, and F here. Depending on the location of the center of pressure at this stage, the momentum, the length of momentum can be quite different. So in this one, uh, case F, force F will give you again uh, the largest torque because uh, it gives you the longest momentum. So um, at this stage, when the lead arm is, uh, becomes paired to the ground uh, during the downstream, the center of pressure position is really important in terms of uh, determining the torque generated by the ground reaction force. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at this uh, in motion. Uh, this is a, a program I brought uh, called the front reading. Um, but uh, with this, let's see how the moment on the ground reaction force and the torque in the front of plane changes as the, uh, the swing progresses. So let's first go back to uh, the beginning of the uh, backswing. Here, the force is generally passing through the center of mass. So it is uh, not an eccentric force. It's called a concentric force, no momentum. So the momentum is zero. As a result, the torque in the front of plane is also zero. But then as the backswing progresses, you will see that um, the center pressure uh, shifts toward the trail foot, and then the force also inclines slightly toward the target. But now we see uh, this momentum. So the ground reaction force becomes uh, an eccentric force uh, here. And then we have this momentum. So the force is acting this way, the momentum is going this way. So it gives you a, a, a clockwise torque. So that's why um, you know, we have a negative torque. Negative torque means a clockwise torque. And the torque becomes maximum during the backswing here. And this is when uh, the momentum also becomes the longest. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, this graph at the bottom is the uh, momentum formed by the ground reaction force about the center of mass. The middle one is the uh, ground reaction forces. So the red line is the combined ground reaction force. Uh, the green one is the lead foot ground reaction force. And the blue is the trail foot ground reaction force. Uh, but if you look at the uh, the torque, now the clockwise torque becomes maximum here. But then once you pass this point, then the force arrow starts inclining toward the target. And here, the ground reaction force passes through the center of mass. Again, this becomes a concentric force. So no momentum here. And then the torque is also zero here. Then when you pass this point, then the force arrow will further incline. And then this is uh, the end of pelvis rotation. So uh, in other words, this is when the pelvis uh, finishes rotation and then starts rotating in the downward direction. And then at uh, this point is the top of action. So, so at this point, the club changes the direction of rotation. Uh, but here, you will see at this long momentum because of the inclination of the ground reaction force. Still, the center pressure stays uh, close to the trail foot, but because of the inclination, you have a long momentum, okay? and then you have a fairly large torque generated already here. This is actually the uh, men's average of uh, maximum torque. But at the beginning of the uh, downswing, he already uh, reaches this value here. And then, so if you go slightly more here, this is when the momentum becomes the longest. Okay. Uh, so we have the longest momentum here. With that, we have the first peak. But this peak is mainly coming from the longest momentum. 
the force is still uh, below the body weight. Here, for the force, the, the unit is body weight. And it starts with one body weight, which that means uh, the force is equal to the body weight. And then here, the force is uh, larger than the body weight, but here the force is, uh, the ground direction force is smaller than the body weight. So this phase is called the unweighting phase. So your force is uh, less than the body weight. So interestingly, the force is not large here because uh, you are uh, at the uh, unweighting peak, the most unweighting here, but the force is the smallest. But because of this long moment arm, you have the first peak in terms of the torque. And then the maximum here at this point, as you can see, the moment arm is decreasing because the center pressure moves toward the lead foot and then the force becomes more vertical. And then also the magnitude is increasing. And then, so uh, here's the momentum. And then the force magnitude is a lot greater than that uh, at the top of the extreme. But the magnitude is increasing, the force magnitude is increasing, but the momentum is decreasing. But at this point, the force and momentum gives the best combination. So we have the peak torque here. So the peak torque is generally uh, uh, generated when the lead arm is paired to the ground or slightly before that. So when you reach the peak torque, uh, peak torque early in the downswing, then this is uh, beneficial because uh, using uh, these, these uh, large torque, that you will be able to accelerate uh, your body angularly uh, early on. But then after you pass this point, and you will see that uh, although the magnitude keeps increasing, but the moment time is getting shorter. So moment time is getting shorter faster than uh, the force uh, increasing. So the, uh, the torque uh, decreases. Then this is when the ground reaction force becomes maximum. But the, when the ground reaction force is maximum, the torque is uh, almost a heft here. So you're not really generating the maximum torque by using the, the maximum force, or rather the maximum tor torque should uh, occur a lot earlier than the maximum force. Uh, but anyways, so uh, then the force will pass through the center of mass. So the moment time is zero, and then the torque will also zero here. But this is how the torque changes throughout the swing. Now what this goes really uh, uh, too well uh, what uh, this copy does really well is um, you know, having good amount of force here, and then also this moment time. So he has a large uh, uh, clockwise torque uh, during detection here. And then at the end of pelvis rotation and then top of vacuum here, he's already generating large torque by using long moment time here. So without putting much effort here, because this, this is during the unweighting phase. So the force is not much, but using this moment on is generating large torque already. But he's starting the downstream with the large torque. Okay. So it's, a, it's like a jump start. He's uh, jump starting uh, the, the downstream. This is actually a uh, grant weight, uh, my favorite player. Uh, in terms of uh, the golf ground interruption, he has really good uh, pattern here. Thank you.